Conformational Analysis. This is a really good application for Newman projections. Let's consider ethane. Now this conformation of ethane, where we've got the torsion angle between every set of hydrogens to be 180 degrees, right, like this hydrogen is pointing in the opposite direction from this one. And this hydrogen that's on the left carbon on a wedge is 180 degrees from this hydrogen that's on the right carbon on a dash. And this one and this one are 180 degrees. When you have those 180 degree torsion angles, we're talking a staggered conformation. Now it's really easy to see a staggered conformation when you use a Newman projection. So if we're looking from the left-hand carbon towards the right-hand carbon down the bond, then our front carbon looks like this. And our back carbon looks like this. Right, and now you can see these torsion angles. 180 degrees. Or here, 180 degrees. Much easier to see. Now, we can rotate around this bond. Right, a single bond doesn't have any barrier to rotation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a 180 degree rotation. So that's going to take this bond and instead of having it pointing straight up, it's going to be pointing straight down. So after doing that 180 degree rotation, we get this wedge dash structure. You can see the H that's now colored in blue, represented here in the Newman projection, was pointing straight up, now it's pointing straight down. The H that was represented in red was going down and to the left and away from us. It's now going up and to the left and toward us. And the H that was represented in green here, that was going down and to the right and toward us, is now going up and to the left and away from us. And if we look from the left, we get this Newman projection. So our front carbon has been inverted. And our back carbon has stayed the same. And I'm just drawing these slightly out of order so you can see them. This is what's called a, a eclipsed conformation. And the eclipse conformation is at higher energy because we've got these steric interactions. Right, we have three of them, three HH eclipsing interactions. Right, and whereas I had a 180 degree torsion angle in the staggered conformation, now I have zero degree torsion angle in the eclipse conformation. Here's a graph showing how the potential energy of the molecule changes as we rotate the front carbon. So, here I've got my two hydrogens at a 180 degree bond angle. We're in our lowest energy conformation, which is fully staggered. As we start to rotate this carbon, we start shrinking the dihedral angles. And here, we've gone to now a set of eclipsing interactions, three of them, right? One, two, three three eclipsing interactions. And then as we rotate further, we go back and now we have no eclipsing interactions. And then we rotate again and we've got three eclipsing interactions again. And it's a sinusoidal function. So the full cost of the eclipsing interactions, the three eclipsing interactions, is 12 kilojoules per mole. And so we've got 3 times H, H eclipse equals 12 kilojoules. 
And so if we divide that by 3, then we get the cost of a hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing interaction is 4 kilojoules per mole. Actually, let's change our notation. So we're going to say the HH eclipsing interaction is 4 kilojoules. Now let's look at propane. Essentially, we've just changed a hydrogen to a methyl group. And if we draw the Newman projection for this, we can see that our methyl group is going straight up. And you can see that that is a staggered conformation. And if we did a 180 degree rotation, we'll get the eclipse conformation. So there's the wedge dash structure of our eclipse conformation. And when we draw the Newman projection, now we see the methyl group is going straight down. And our back carbon remains unchanged. So we got a hydrogen there, and a hydrogen there, and a hydrogen there. Now, in this eclipse conformation, this is an eclipsing interaction between a methyl and a hydrogen. Do you think that'll be more energetic or less energetic than the one between a pair of hydrogens? So here's our graph of potential energy versus dihedral angle, and now the height of the fully eclipsed conformation is 14 kilojoules per mole. So we've got two of the hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing interactions plus one of the methyl-hydrogen eclipsing interactions equals 14 kilojoules. So if we want to know the cost of a methyl-hydrogen eclipsing interaction, that's going to equal 14 minus 2 times the hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing interaction. And you recall from earlier, that's 4 kilojoules per mole each. So, the eclipsing interaction of the methyl to the hydrogen equals 14 minus 8. Let me get my calculator. That's 6 kilojoules. And it makes, more, it makes sense because... A methyl group is bulkier than a hydrogen, so this steric interaction should be uh, more destabilizing. Now let's look at the curve for butane. The lowest energy conformation is where the two methyl groups are at a 180 degree dihedral angle. Here's the Newman projection for this wedge dash structure. As we eclipse this methyl group, with this hydrogen, we'll also eclipse this hydrogen with this methyl group to give us this Newman projection. And that's worth 16 kilojoules per mole. Which makes sense because we've got 6 plus 6 plus 4, right? Two methyl hydrogen eclipsing interactions plus a hydrogen hydrogen eclipsing interaction. 6 kilojoules plus 6 kilojoules plus 4, that equals 16. Now, when we get down here, we're not down to zero because even though the two methyl groups are, are not eclipsed, they are now 60 degrees from each other, and they're so bulky that there is even a steric interaction here. So that's what we call a gauche interaction, G-A-U-C-H-E. And then... At our highest energy point, we've got a methyl-methyl eclipse and two hydrogen-hydrogen eclipses. 
So this is 4 kilojoules, and this is 4 kilojoules. What's this worth? The methyl methyl eclipse. So we've got eclipsing methyl methyl, that equals 19 kilojoules minus 2 times 4 equals 19 minus 8. That's 11 kilojoules. That's because those methyl groups are really bulky. And the gauche interaction is worth 3.8 kilojoules per mole.